Joyce McConnell becomes the 15th president of Colorado State University on July 1st. Congratulations. Welcome to Colorado. Thank you so much, Kyle. So you've been getting acquainted with the CSU community. My favorite question to ask everybody as they start a new role is what surprises you the most? And so many people tell me, well, everyone's so nice or they're so talented, which I hope is not a surprise if you took the job. So with that in mind, I will ask you, what surprised you the most about CSU? Well, this is going to be a funny answer, but because I'm coming from West Virginia University, which is built on the Apple Appalachian Hills. Um, when I came to CSU and looked at the campus, I realized all of a sudden I could see almost the entire campus at one time, where because we're divided by hills, we can't. And so that was the most surprising thing, believe it or not. The other things like the nature of the campus and what it's like were reasons why I wanted to take the position. Do you get the sense that CSU has unique challenges, or are they the same challenges that every higher education institution faces? I think that higher education is facing some significant challenges everywhere. Um, and Colorado State is actually in a really good place to be able to move forward, given those challenges, if we see them also as opportunities for how to move into the future. And I think that CSU is perfectly poised for that. Do you get the sense, though, that CSU is up against anything that's unusual? No. You do not? I do not. Um, and I was saying earlier to someone that if you go to any meeting of the Association of Public and Land-Grant Universities, when you see presidents or provosts sitting around a table, they're all talking about the same challenges. We, they may present themselves in slightly different ways. We might, might find unique ways to address them, given our individual identity as an institution. But the issues are very, very similar. You know, um, access success, mm -hmm. career, indebtedness, you know, um, de declining state funding. Those are really very similar across the country. You talk about issues of, of money. Do you think that CSU students are currently getting a, a fair value for the dollar they pay? Absolutely. I have no question. Um, state support is at about 12% right now, and CSU has done a really good job of keeping its tuition as low as possible. And I think the, the efficiencies that have been built in and the quality of the research and the teaching that's going on there, I think it's a bargain. And do you think it's inevitable that the cost of tuition will rise year by year? We hope not. I mean, we hope that there are other ways that we can be creative, both about efficiencies, about increases in quality, and then looking at other kinds of partnerships that might actually allow us to have other sources of revenue. Help me understand that sources of revenue. Are you talking about the idea of an, in an innovation pipeline in terms of leveraging technology coming out of the university? Well, I think, I think that's really a key area, and being able to translate the phenomenal research that goes on at a university, it's often said in in the medical system it's called bench to bedside you know at a school like CSU we could look at it as barn to or as bench to barn um, I think that being able to take the technological developments that are going on whether it's in the Energy Institute or the veterinary hospital or even in engineering and technology and artificial intelligence there's tremendous opportunity there for commercialization we just need to get on top of it if it was so close at hand, why wasn't it done already? I think it's an evolution. You know, I, one of the things that they always say about a president is a president has to be able to look around the corner and see what's coming. Um, and I think Tony Frank has been phenomenal at doing that. And so he's put CSU in exactly the perf perfect position to be able to look around that next corner and ramp up to meet that challenge. Is it a blessing or a curse that he's sticking around as chancellor? I mean, you're going to be operating yeah. in his shadow. He's a, he's a much loved guy up there. He is much loved, and I, I've grown to love him too. Um, he's a phenomenal leader, and I think that it's actually a really a gift to me and to CSU and to the CSU system that he's sticking around. I asked you about the value to students. Do you get the sense that CSU faculty and staff are fairly paid? You know, I think that this is the issue of pay is one that's one of those issues that all presidents talk about. Um, as things have become leaner and leaner and you try to keep tuition down, one of the flexible areas um, can be not giving, you know, large uh, increases. And that's not something that I want to continue. I think that at West Virginia University, we just tackled it over the last couple of years. I think one of the things that we all have to struggle with is 
that we have to pace ourselves in the solutions. We have to benchmark ourselves and say, where do we want in a competitive market? Where do we need our faculty to be? And over a period of time, how are we going to get there? When, um, when you say pace yourself, that sounds to me like telling faculty and staff, slow, slow down what you're asking for. We'll get there eventually. No, not necessarily slow down, but have a plan. Because I think one of the things that happens often is it's a good year. And so you say, OK, this year we can afford you know, X in terms of a raise. And I think CSU is, when there have been good years, has been very good about doing that. But I think that then what happens in years of retraction, because there hasn't been a plan in place, it's not already you know, something that you're anticipating. And so what I tried to do at West Virginia University was to spend a year benchmarking compared to our peers, which CSU has already done, um, and then say, OK, to get there by x date, how do we need to do that? And what are our sources of revenue going to be? So it's really just being very methodical, like a business would be, about how are we going to be able to attract competitive faculty, and how are we going to be able to retain them? I was talking with a colleague today who's a CSU alum, and she said to me that she feels like CSU has an identity crisis. I've heard that a lot How over the last decade. Tell have me. You, have, you, have you heard that from people? I have not, so tell me more about it. Uh, the general sense that I get is, is that the idea is, what does CSU want to project to the world, and who is CSU looking to attract? And just mm -hmm. somebody who was steeped in your system, is very proud of her education there, said that she still, still felt that was a factor. But you haven't gotten that from students or faculty No in the one community? has said that to me yet. Okay. But I do think that being able to um, redefine um, or to, f to figure out how you are a land-grant university in the 21st century, and I say in the second decade of the 21st century, is a really important question that I think a lot of land-grant universities are trying to answer. Because, you know, whereas the, the agriculture has been so important to the state of Colorado will remain very important, you also have other now centers of prosperity. And, and looking at what is it that a university like like CSU needs to be doing so that it's all in in being able to produce that kind or be supportive of that growth of prosperity. That, those are the kinds of questions that were asked in the 1800s about why do we need a land grant institution. So it's really about, I, I don't think that there's an identity crisis as much as there's a, a, a need to say, what is the 21st century second decade land grant and how do we continue to contribute to Colorado in the way that we have for the last 150 years. And we know the Board of Governors was particularly interested in your experience at West Virginia as another land grant institution. Healthy competition makes everybody stronger. Who are CSU's competitors? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I'm, I'm sure that if we look in Colorado itself, um, uh, CU is definitely a competitor. Um, UD is a competitor. And, and probably in some ways, maybe some of the more regional institutions are also competitors, depending on what students are really seeking. But I think what makes CSU different is that not only does it have a footprint in Colorado, but it is well known nationally and internationally. And for certain areas of research, CSU is in an incredibly powerful competitive position. What were you thinking as a newly hired university president when you watched the turmoil down the road at the University of Colorado community over the hiring of Mark Kennedy? Well, I was really proud of our board, of the CSU board. I think that they've just done a wonderful job, um, both the search committee and the board in the CSU process, and I'm grateful for that. Could you imagine walking in as a new university president with a split decision from the board? No. You, your, your selection was <laughs> unanimous. You, you, say, you say no. How would it change? Thanks. I think that it's more powerful for a president to be able to walk in with 100% support of the board. Um, it sends a message to the community about um, faith and trust in that particular person. Um, being a leader is, you know, some people talk about being a leader is about being able to inspire others. That's absolutely true. But being a leader is also being someone that you can look to and know that others have confidence in. And so that single ingredient is so powerful. And I feel very privileged to be able to walk into CSU with that level of support. 
And lastly, uh, you will be CSU's first female president. What does that mean to you? What should it mean to the university community? Well, I think, first of all, to be the 15th president is really extraordinary in its 150th year. That just blows me away. Um, to be the first female president is a phenomenal honor. Um, Colorado is an incredible state, has a great Western tradition of independence. I think hiring the first female president of CSU is really reflective of that Colorado spirit. Joyce McConnell, thank you for your time. Congratulations again, and thank look you. forward to talking with you in the future. Thank you, Kyle. Subscribe to the next YouTube channel for the best of next and some other stuff.